Hello and welcome to another episode of Madam Suzanne Live. I'm your host, Freddie Shaben. And today I'm going to talk to you about something that doesn't get talked about a lot in our business, just because the nature of our business and how it's been perceived and looked upon and thought about and all this stuff. So let me dive right in, shall we? I'm going to give you a couple of examples of something that happened in my life as an escort agent for over 20 years online. So the year was, hey, Miss Vivian, how you doing? Good to see you. Long time no see. Hi, everybody. Glad you're here. <clears throat> so the year was uh, 2001. And I was working with, uh, my girlfriend was uh, Lisa Storm, and she was an online escort. And she's the one actually that uh, helped me look at online and look at it in a different way and see how this business is ran online, right? She started me off. So we're living together, and I did all the emails. I was the one responsible for all the screening and vetting the clients. And basically, I gave her a list of clients to call once they're screened, and she just gave them a call just to verify and everything that, you know, they know that she's legit so they can send the deposit because we did deposits back then because she was so busy and so popular. Uh, so um, I, I, I started getting emails from, uh, from this guy. And he wanted to book a, an appointment, but he's going back and forth. And we're talking about now, I mean, I used to be really, really patient with clients. Um, and I, I guess I was still patient all, all my career because, you know, I don't like to let money walk, to be honest with you. So I was always very accommodating, very, you know, what, whatever it takes me 30 seconds or a minute while I'm screening, you know, I shoot him an email. And at the time, I had a lot of drafts. So it was all actually basically like a copy and paste type of job. And I would put some. I will change some things in the draft just to make it more customized to that person. This way they don't feel like it's got, it's a, it's a, it's a draft, right? So I started talking to this guy and then this guy was not booking and he was going back and forth. I'm like, Oh, this guy is full of it. Right. So I just, I just stopped, you know, responding. Right. It's about like two months later or something like that. I can't remember if it was a month or two months, but it was a long time. <clears throat> now I'm busy and everything, so I can't just like, you know, sit there and babysit, especially if there's no business. So, you know, just let it go. Of course, he's thinking he's talking to Lisa, right? Now, the more I ignored them, the meaner and weirder the emails got, right? So at first he was, you know, he was nice of everything. And then little by little, the, the true colors come out. Just like, I'll give you an example, if you're in a relationship or starting a relationship, and at first, you know, they all trying to hunky dory and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, you say something they don't like, or you do something they don't they don't approve of, and all of a sudden, now you're a villain. Now the 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 real person comes out, right? The real personality. It was something similar to that. That's how I equate it to in the real world. <clears throat> so, um, so I'm like, now I'm paying attention to this guy. I'm like, man, what's up with this guy? And I don't think at the time you could block, you know, I used Gmail and I can't remember the other, um, you know, platform I used for emails, but you couldn't block at the time, right? You know, like spam or all this stuff that came later. So um, now I'm like, okay, this guy, you know, do you know who I am? They call me Iceman and all this stuff, right? And here's what made me know it's him and it's a stalker, right? I had no idea who this guy Iceman is. I, I had no clue. I, I didn't care. I was just trying to run my business, take care of my, you know, my girlfriend and our business and the house and all this stuff. <clears throat> well, he started threatening he's going to take the web, our, the, our websites down, you know, the escort website and domination website and all this stuff. It was starting to get ugly. And wouldn't you know, at the time I used... In a land for to host the, the websites and everything else we did online, right? We bought the we all made names from them. They're out of Atlanta, Georgia. And wouldn't you know, lo and behold, and I've, I have been using them at that point for like three years. Never had an issue. They never were the service was never down. They never had any maintenance issues or anything like this, right? Their servers are great. So the website is always, you know, 24-7, no problems, not one glitch. Even, uh, you know, Y2K, we didn't have a problem, right? When everybody was thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be, if you're old enough to have lived at that time, you were an adult, you'll see that it was, 
was a big thing. Everybody thought we're going to lose the internet and all this stuff. So the website went down. So I call Innerland. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, the website is down. You know, here, you know, here's a, you know, they want the maintenance ticket and all this stuff, right? All the protocol. Well, they told me that this is weird because this never happened to them. They're very, very secure. They have great firewalls. And the whole section where our server was, everything went down. But it started, they knew it. It started, the malicious attack started in our server through our website, lisastorm.com. So I'm like, oh, man. Right away, I thought about this guy, right? Because he's saying how he's one of the most prolific hackers and all this stuff. <clears throat> so I had no idea about stalking at the time. You know, I I, I had a couple of ex-girlfriends that stalked me a little bit here and there. You know, I would look out the window and I'll see see them in the car uh, parked in the alleyway when I used to live down on the beach here in Pacific Beach in San Diego. And um, another one wouldn't, wouldn't you know, no matter how, how many times you try to break up with them, you just don't get it and all this stuff. And Back then, I, I didn't really know how to communicate. I think uh, I communicated a lot better now, but back then it had something to do with me too because I didn't know how to communicate properly, but they definitely there was something wrong going on with them. It had nothing to do with me, right? So, and I wasn't educated. So, uh, it took about three years, you know, uh, from being, being nice to him and being diplomatic online and all this stuff. And finally, he, he just went away right but it was a lot of work on my part we had to really be careful because now i don't know if this guy is gonna find out where we live and it wouldn't have been that hard we lived in vegas at the time vegas is not that big and you know lisa is is going on jobs you know four or five days a week and you know it's just we had to be really really careful and it was a pain in the butt but so thank god nothing happened and we, we never got any visitors or anything like this so it was calls and hang-ups and all this stuff right so that was one story, right? I'm going to tell you the second story, then we'll we'll go from there. <clears throat> second story was in Orange County. One of the escorts I had was a little petite blonde. In fact, it's the same one that if you heard me talk about the choking story before, where one of the clients decided that he wanted to choke her just for uh, sexual purposes, right? And it didn't work out because obviously, uh, you know, she wasn't one of those uh, escorts that liked or a woman that liked to be choked during sex. But anyways, everything was fine and she wasn't hurt. But um, it's ironically the same. I don't know, something about her or something. She was very, very tiny. She was about five foot two or three max, weighed 100 pounds, soaking wet, beautiful little blonde. And she was a college student, right? Very, very smart. She wanted to be like a nuclear physicist or, or a microbiologist, one of those. I can't remember, but she was very, very smart. And she had a client that would see her once a week, right? This went on for about, I would say for about four months. And this, this uh, client, this particular client, would not see anybody else. You see, most of my, my escort clients, they went, went and took the rounds, right? They, they went and saw this girl one day saw another one, wanted to try a different one, a new one. You know, that's just how guys are wired, right? Most of them. Now, this, and so of course, some guys, they get stuck. I had few, very, very few clients, like, you know, percentage is very low, not even 1%, 0, 0, 0, 0.0001%, right? Of the clients that actually went to just one escort and they just stayed with that one escort. In other words, they did not go see anybody else. They just... They just saw that one girl and that was it. They are like a one escort man, <laughs> one woman man, right? <laughs> and most of them did not have a rent in a relationship that I know of. Like they were either widowed or divorced or whatever. So maybe that explains that, right? So she started noticing things in a parking garage. That's how it all started. And I've always, you know, when I, when I you know, trained the escorts because I trained them, they, they've never done this before. So I always train them about safety. You know me, if you've been, you know, following me for almost a year now, I always preach safety. Safety is always number one. In fact, this is one of the main reasons why I do a lot of these videos with safety in mind, like this video right here. It's about how to deal with stalkers, right? It's stalking and stalkers and stuff like this. <clears throat> so she started noticing the car 
and the car parked in the same spot almost like three nights in a row and some guy was in it. She didn't know who it was. So I told them to always, you know, watch your surroundings, especially when you get into the parking garage, because all the complexes I was in, we had, a, you know, the, the first level and the underground parking garage, right? Some of them had outdoors too, but most of them were, in this particular case, it was a park place, which was the garage is, is either you go in it or underneath, right? There's two, two, two levels to the parking. <clears throat> so this, uh, this escort told me that, you know, she thinks she's, she's feeling kind of weird and she thought she was being followed. Like a week later after the first time she saw the car, then the second time by the third time, she's like, I think that the guys follow, you know, followed me. This is like the next day she worked, right? Which was like two days later. I'm like, okay, well, just pay attention and be careful. And if you see it again, I mean, I'll come over myself and see what's going on. I'm thinking, is it a cop? You know, is it is it a detective watching us undercover? Is it, you know, all sorts of thoughts go in your head because I'll, as you know, you know, this is, this was a, a, an illegal activity at the time, and uh, you never know, uh, you know who's, who, you know who's doing what, right? So um, now, one day she said that she found a note. This is like maybe two weeks later or something like this. She found a note, and and the whole time I just remember the whole time she's telling me how this client is telling her. All these things, I love you and I want to be with you and, and I can I can support you and you, you don't have to do this and all this other stuff, which I've heard before, but it's usually guys that just want, you know, free, you know what, right? Uh, you know, they're trying to get it for free and, you know, they like to grow, but they, they don't want to pay every day, you know, 500 or or $1,000 because, you know, they want to, they love having, you know, intimacy with them. And, and I've seen that before, but... <clears throat> This particular guy, the reason why it sounded different to me because of the things she's been telling me all along about the parking garage and she thinks she's being followed. And and then she found a note one night on her, um, like, you know, where you go in the, the door. She had a, she had an older car, but, and you can put uh, the note right there so when somebody opening their door, they could see it. And it was basically a little card professing their love and they want to be with them and all this stuff. So, of course, we connected one on one. And she said, I know it's that guy for sure. You know, I think I've seen him. I think it's him. You know, he drives a blah, blah, blah. And I think it's him. Because I had asked him, you know, and I was like, what do you drive? You know, I need to get a new car or something like this. That's what she told me. And he told us something about, you know, what he drove and she connected the dots. Right. So now. Here's and I and of course I told her I, I looked up I looked up this uh, you know I went and Googled like I did today for this before when I was getting ready for this uh, it's uh, from uh, WikiHow which is a great resource and it's uh, the article is called How to Deal with Stalkers and I had a you know ident identifying stalker which we can go through this in a little bit and I told her just study this because she's a very very smart girl and see see what we can do about this and and how we can you know. Uh, deal with this right and I and I went and, and talked to a couple of people and uh, that have experience and stuff stuff like this right like a couple of my exes that actually were, were stopped before so now here's when we started really really because you know it's and you can read all these articles and I can probably do another video where it's extensively just for the education on how to deal with stalkers right this is just for, for, for today's purposes. You can always, you know, look at it, you know, with a grain of salt and go, you know, you know what, it's not doing anything. You know, he hasn't harmed me. You know, those are the justifications in someone's mind, right? He hasn't actually done anything to hurt me and all these things. And, and at that point, everything was okay. Until one night, she goes home. And the next morning, the car is broken into. And unfortunately, I don't know why she did this. She left a whole bunch of cash, thousands of dollars. She said she was going to do something the next day or, or she forgot or something. Whatever the excuse was, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Her sweater was taken. She had gym, gym outfit in there, like yoga pants and all this stuff. And 
shoes, the yoga pants was missing only, which is weird. Because if somebody's gonna do burglaries, from my experience with people that used to do that, or me going to, you know, uh, prison and, and meeting these these guys, that they uh, they take everything. You know, they're they're not going out just go start shopping in your car. They're just gonna grab everything and go, right? Cash is gone. The um, couple of outfits were gone, like you know the work outfits, like lingerie or whatever, in her bag and. Uh, the uh, yoga pants and the money. And she said, she's been living in that, she lived in a really nice neighborhood in a house. She rented a room in a really nice house. She's been living in that you know place for like two years, never any problems. It's very, very safe, blah, blah, blah. And she said she might have seen him following her, right? So now what do we do, right? So it's a matter now of, of, of actually busting the guy, right? Now, I'm really busy, right? I'm really, really busy at the time. I mean, we're talking, this is 2015, which is like the height of when we already gotten enough clients and are barely advertising for new clients or booking new clients, and we're just rocking and rolling, right? So I'm like going 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I did not have time sometimes to even eat or go pee, excuse my French, let alone having to go over there and try to play detective, right? So we sat down, me and this escort, and I'm like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. When I book him, I'm going to book him at the end of the day, because he usually booked around towards the end of the day anyways, because he wanted to be the last guy. And now it all started making sense. When I looked at my calendar, I used Google calendars to keep my appointments for, for all the escorts. And when I looked at the pattern and I started having to be play detective, right? When I looked at their pattern of the booking, it was always late, which never really was a red flag to me because there's a lot of guys that that's their schedule, right? That's their schedule. They work till five or six or whatever, and that's when they can see the girl because we, we worked 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So a lot of them would say, when is the last appointment? And some of them would be too late and wouldn't be able to book them or ask the escort to. So that happened a lot, right? Where I would have to ask the escort, do you want to stay another hour for $700 or $1,000 or whatever the hell it was, right? <clears throat> so I never paid attention. But now looking back at that point when, when she got her car was broken into and she got all the stuff, you know, stolen, I, I went back and looked at this guy, right? And I saw that he always wanted, and I, and I had it actually written in there in my notes because I have I kept reading meticulous notes about these these gentlemen because I had so many of them I had to right. It, he always wanted the very very last appointment. When I remembered, like if sometimes there was somebody at six o'clock, and but but four to six was available, and I had already booked somebody else at six o'clock. No, he asked me if I could call that guy and ask him to move it back to five or four or whatever and give him the six o'clock slot if that's the last uh, appointment available. So now it's all clicking in my head, right? You know how you look back and you go, oh my God, you know, it's like, who's done it? You start clicking, oh yeah, this is, this, this is, it makes sense. So it completes the picture for you, right? So I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So this is what we did. I said, look, here what we're going to do. I basically set him up. Right. You know what I'm going to say. We're going to book him at seven o'clock. Forget about six o'clock because I want everybody out of the way. Right. I want all the escorts to be done. I want everybody to be on so I can focus on this problem I have. Right. Because I need, really needed to, to, to focus on this problem. And I wanted to make sure everybody's gone home so I'm not distracted and I can focus on this guy and I can be there between 7 and 8 o'clock. So I, I was planning on being there around 7.30, 7.45, whenever I can get out of the office. And and I was I only lived, you know, if I wasn't at my exes, I was right there about eight minutes away from that particular place from my house at the time because I lived by Bal Balboa Island, just up Jamboree. So I went and I went and made it there, and I told her just 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 act normal, and um, you know after you're done, I want you to just do what you usually do, and just get in the car and go. And I'm gonna follow the whole the whole way, and I'm gonna see what you know who's following me, if this guy's following me, whatever. <clears throat> 
Well, you know what I'm going to say, right? Sure enough, I get there about 7.30, 7.45, whatever it was. They got done. If he wanted this freaking guy, excuse my French, wanted every second. He was one of those clients. I'm sure you guys in the business will, will relate to this. This guy is like, they don't like, you know, you know about clock watching. They don't like clock watchers. Well, this guy was the clock watcher, okay? Never mind the escorts watching the clock. When is this guy going to get the hell out of here? I already got his money. He already, you know, finished two pumps and a wiggle. So get him out of here. Well, this guy wanted every single second. We'll milk it. We'll look at her. And she started acting weird because he was, she was telling me, like, the way he was looking at her and, like, he's all in love and telling all these weird things. I can't remember all the stuff he was telling her, right? But it's just not normal, right? Not that our business was normal, but it's just not normal for their business. So that you can only imagine. So he, she gets in the car. I'm, I'm in a parking garage. And... Uh, he he actually came down with her. He said, no, no, I want to stay here and go with you. And he wouldn't leave while she's cleaning and stuff. She's trying to get rid of him. I'm like, you know what? Just she was texting me about this stuff. And I said, you know what? Just let him, you know, just go go, go with him. It's okay. It's okay. Now let's see what he's gonna do, right? So I happen to be there and I want to see what this guy's gonna do. So she gets in the car, he gets in his car, she leaves. He acts like, you know, he's looking for something in his trunk or whatever. Now I'm looking at what the hell is he doing? He's setting up a body bag. What the hell is going on, right? It's really weird. So I'm watching the whole thing, and I didn't even know where she lived, to be honest with you. So until then, I did not know where she lived. So I'm waiting. She leaves. I'm still in the parking garage. I'm not making a move. I'm, I got my eyes on this guy. And uh, I even thought about putting a GPS on his car, but I thought that was a little bit too too premature, too, too much, right? I was going to take the, the police because uh, I don't know if at the time uh, I had found the, uh, it's a side note, I had found the uh, GPS on all my cars and my ex my ex's cars, you know, for, from the cops. And <laughs> I think I think I was thinking I was going to take it and put it on his car. But anyways, I followed him. And sure enough, he, he, he hurried up as soon as she got on, obviously. He knew where she lived. He must have, you know, had it on G his GPS because she was already way gone. There's no way he could, he could know like where she's at, where which right, which left she took, or whatever, because the freeway is right there, the four or five. Well, sure enough, he gets in the car and miraculously he ends up like three cars behind her, which she had like a, a minute head start or two minutes head start, whatever it was. There's no way this guy knew exactly where she was going. So now I'm, I'm like on, on a alert. And I'll let you know what happens next time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't you hate it when they do that? The climax on shows. But um, so we, we, I'm following him. He's following her. And then uh, we end up at her house. She gets in the car. She, she gets out of the car, gets her stuff, gets in the house. And he's just sitting there. And then he just started, he gets out of the car. And he started going back and forth in front of her house. And uh, I just, I just gonna do it anymore. So, you know, back then I, I wasn't, I wasn't as calm and as nice. As now. So I just got out of the car and went and confronted him, and we had a conversation. And we never heard from him again. He never booked again. I told him, you know, I'm sorry. You know, he's just this is out of line. You can't do that. I was really nice to him. Um, told him, hey, let's go to uh, IHOP or whatever to sit down and talk. He didn't want to. He just wanted to get in his car and leave. He was embarrassed. He was uh, uh, kind of upset. He was paranoid. He got busted, you know. <clears throat> so that's what happened. So it's it's a very dangerous thing. It's a, it's a weird thing. It's happened to me from a, from a different perspective in a, like, you know, dating type of situation. And it's not, it's not cool. It's not fun. And even though I was a big guy, you know, I can handle myself and, you know, uh, physically, whatever, it's, it still was, you know, not cool, right? It, it doesn't feel good. Uh, does anybody in here have had any type of um, uh, situation or experience that uh, you had uh, people stalk you? You know, uh, you can uh, send me an email or leave it at the comments or you can comment here. I'd love you, you guys to jump in. Uh, here, here we go again. I'm talking by myself here, and I'm, I want to have a conversation, but I, nobody else can talk, right? 
anyway, so yeah, just uh, we can we can do chatty and stuff like this. But I just wanted to uh, tell you about these two stories that happened. And um, yeah, this this article is really really good. It talks about on WikiHow. It talks about uh, the five steps how to deal with stalkers. It just talks about having a stalker can be uncomfortable or terrifying situation depending on the severity of the stalker. Then it talks about the five ways to deal with them. One is identifying the stalker, you know, like what kind of stalker it is. Um, determine the type of stalker you have, like love obsession, uh, someone who has a psychotic fantasy or uh, simple stalkers. They are just individuals who know that they have romantic friendship before. So they, they go through all this stuff, right? But here's the thing about the note about this business. When you're trying to identify a stalker, right? Is it a relationship? Is it an obsession? Is it a love obsession? Is it a fantasy? Is it, you know, when of course there's one that's abusive, you know, partner and whatever. The thing about this uh, this business is that it's such an intimate type of business that the, the lines are blurred sometimes to some people's psyche. So of course, some people cannot put it in perspective of this is just a job for this woman and I'm just here to get my, um, my needs fulfilled and then I'm gone. That's basically the, the symbiotic relationship between an escort and a client. What, what makes it really difficult to identify which type of stalker it is, is because you have a combination of someone that's obsessed, someone that um, is psychotic, has, a, has some sort of fantasy, you know, which they get fulfilled, right? And then they get obsessed because of, they really like something about the woman. And you know what? Stalking is not about the victim. It's about the person themselves. Matthew said, well, yeah, when I was a younger guy, I used to believe strippers were really impressed with me. <laughs> yeah, right? They're that good. <laughs> yeah, they made you believe that, uh, yeah, you know, they really want to be with you and date you and all this stuff. Yeah, it's true. And to be honest with you, you know, I've always taught my escorts, like, you know, just be nice, be cordial, you know, but, you know, I try to, you know, tell them just be yourself, but just don't overdo it because some of these guys, you know, they really stop believing it. And now they want to date you. And now you got a problem on your hand because, you know, first you, you're going to lose the money, you're going to lose the client. And secondly, it, it doesn't work. And, and it's just very uncomfortable, right? Because it is what it is. And some guys have that blurred line. So it's very hard as far as stalking, since we're talking about stalking, to figure out what, what do I have on my hands, right? Is, is, he, is he obsessed? Is, he, is this just a fantasy for him? Is he, does he think he's in love or in lust or whatever it is, right? It's a, kind of a combination of, uh, of these things. It's not just one thing, right? That's why it's, they're very hard to, uh, to pinpoint, right? Especially when you're dealing, like in our case, we dealt between six and eight clients a day per escort. So, and if the escort is working two or three days a week, you know, we're talking anywhere from, you know, 12 to 24 clients per week per escort. So sometimes, you know, it's start, start getting really hard to figure out, you know, who's doing what, right? So that's why, you know, I always uh, suggest to, you know, pay really attention to everything that you do and to pay attention to what the what the client says and does it's all part of the job it's all part of the safety protocol that i always encourage everybody to follow and uh basically that's it it's just a matter of staying safe you know uh, i've heard uh, you know some of my exes that uh, a couple of my exes that i had uh aside from the ones those are different from the ones that actually did a little stalking on me on yours truly. This is years ago, back in the eighties and early nineties. Uh, but I've had, you know, like within the last say 10 or 15 years, a couple of, a couple of, uh, they weren't escorts. It was just, uh, you know, ex-girlfriends that, uh, they were stalked. And one of them would tell me about the nightmare of this guy that, you know, she went out with for a couple of months and nothing serious. And they probably had sex, uh, you know, two or three times. And she wasn't into it and she called him and let him know, you know, I'm sorry, it's just this is not working out or, you know, maybe we could be better friends. And and then it went escalated from there to even when the, the, the guy moved away overseas, he was still stalking her. You know, it's like it was crazy, like, especially nowadays with Facebook and Twitter and 
Instagram and YouTube and all and TikTok, all this stuff. I mean, can you imagine? Stalkers are like, oh my God, they're living in heaven right now. It's like paradise because if somebody is really that sick and want to stalk somebody, especially electronically, they could do some damage, right? Especially, I worry about the ones that actually like real hackers, like that Iceman guy that I told you about the story. You know, some of these guys are really, really capable. I mean, this guy ended up, I was watching American Greed, which is one of my favorite shows back in the day. And I was watching an episode and it was about him, how he hacked and he had all these people with the credit cards and ATM machines and all this stuff. And they had to bust him. He was in San Francisco and he was, he was actually called Iceman. So I always wondered, was this the same guy, right? There was only one Iceman hacker that, that I knew of. Because I try to Google this and everything, you know, but um, if it's the same guy, he ended up getting arrested twice and going to prison. But um, anyway, so the basic stories I wanted to share with you tonight, and um, I could go over the uh, the article, but I think I'll be boring for you. So basically what I'll do is I'll probably do another video just in case uh, people are interested in learning more about uh, stalking and stuff like this. I'll talk about it be more educational uh, for educational purposes for people that are having issues have had issues or think they have an issue so it's it's good it's good information to have and it it belongs to the safety category which is my favorite so i don't mind doing that at all uh, for everybody's safety so basically that's about it uh, i've just been uh, tagging along here uh, i got a I got a call from another producer. We were on the phone uh, yesterday for a few hours, for about three hours. Then I talked to my uh, attorney and my brother, who happens to be a, an attorney, a business attorney. And uh, we discussed uh, some of the things that uh, the and I talked about. These are these are new producers. I've never dealt with them before, not like the other ones that I had a contract with. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. I don't really even like to talk about it because Nothing is true. And, you know, sometimes even when you have a contract, it doesn't work, work out, right? So I don't keep my hopes up. And I don't, of course, I'm always going to be positive, but I always like to wait and not get excited because, you know, uh, it's all about expectations. And I keep my expectations, you know, in check. This way I don't get, because that's, I have control over the expectation part, not what other people do. So, I try to keep my expectations down. And other than that, I'm just making my videos. Uh, I got my dog and I got my mom. And I'm painting today, uh, going to the gym, trying to get back into like a real serious. I'm thinking about uh, competing uh, this year in like a show. show. And uh, basically that it. That's all that's going on in my life. It's not really as exciting <laughs> as you might think at the moment. But um, hopefully, and I hope uh, you guys are... Um, are doing good. Uh, if there's anybody that wants to uh, talk about anything else or leave a comment or if you have a question or if you want to share something with us, this is a good time to do it. I know we're only at the 33 minute mark, but um, usually we go an hour. But I just want to go by uh, by what you guys want to talk about. So please, uh, in the comments, if you want to talk about anything else, if you have a question about something or uh, whatever, remark, uh, observation, suggestion, anything you want, I'm totally to whatever you want to talk about. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, all I have today. We can talk about anything else you want, but this is really a great article. It's um, it's through uh, WikiHow. You can't see it. WikiHow, and it's uh, if you just Google uh, how to deal with stalkers, and they'll come up. They're usually number one or two on the organic search on Google. How to deal with stalkers? It's a it's a very good article. Anyway, so how is everybody doing? How is life? I hope everybody is getting their vaccine. Uh, Jane J just uh, up in San Diego, Johnson and Johnson, which I think uh, I, I want to get that one versus uh, Pfizer or Moderna, whatever. Freddie, the move happened this year. I feel big things coming. My sending vibes out for you. And everyone else watching it, surprising large sum of money to come before the year ends. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Matthew. From your mind to God's ears, or whoever's up there in control, right? Or down there, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm spiritual. I'm not really religious. I was born Catholic. 
uh, but uh, you know, along the way, you know, you, you start thinking for yourself and making your own judgment and determination of what you believe in. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty spiritual. I believe in the yes. I believe in, you know, what we put out, we, we get back, I believe in karma. I believe in good intentions and good intentions, you know, back and all this stuff, you know, you reap what you sow. So uh, whoever's in charge, listen to Matthew, or maybe you're the one who gave him the information. So <laughs> that, that sounds great. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's going to happen, man. You know, uh, no means uh, no means only you haven't found a way for, for the yes, right? I, I was I was uh, listening to somebody's podcast the other day, and that's that's what they said. And I always said that, right? That like, no only means that you haven't found the yes. Of course, in some occasions, the stories like what we're talking about, stalkers. If somebody says no, that means no, get away from me, right? <laughs> that doesn't work for that part, but. No, as far as like business or trying to achieve your goal or trying to make something happen and it's just not working out. You just try something different, try a different avenue or open a different door. That's all. You know, one door closes, another one opens. So thank you, Matthew, for the positive affirmation and confirmation. I really appreciate you. So anybody else have anything else or should we? Uh, you guys have no questions tonight? Nothing about anything? We cut everything on this channel. Oh, so to be honest with you, I have a hard time trying to think of things. Okay, I'm like, I have to look back and go, because we have over 100 videos on this channel, like 110 or 20, whatever it was. And I'm like, man, what is there left that I haven't talked about, right? And this is why, you know, I changed the, the format a little bit this year. Hey, Summer, there you are. How are you? Um, good to see you. Do you have any questions, Summer? Summer, I think, just started uh, watching these videos. She just uh, Did you just stumble on this channel? I'm thinking you did, right? Um, so she's a very nice person. But um, so uh, sometimes I have a hard time trying to figure out, like, what subject I have not covered or what do I want to share or what do I want to, you know, share information, right? You know, inspire or teach or motivate or whatever. So sometimes I have to scratch my head, you know. Great, thank you. Now I'm cleaning. No, I saw you on soft white underbelly. Right, right. Um, so you don't have any questions for me? You don't have any comments or anything? Did you start reading the book? Anyway, so um, let me know how you like that book, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Summer. And you're always cleaning. I noticed that's a good job. Um, oh, by the way, anybody that has not gotten my um, my book and you want it, just let me know. Send me an email to Madam Suzanne twenty twenty at gmail .com. Right, I'll type it right here. If you can grab it, and I'll be more than happy to send you a copy and send you. Either the, that's my email address. I can send you either e version or the audio version or both if you'd like. That's not a problem. It takes me literally 15 seconds. So, anybody in the room right here in the chat room that has not read and you're interested in reading it, you don't have to, but I have two books. One is Madam Suzanne, which is about what happened in Orange County and how the whole thing, you know, came about and how I started and then how I fell in. Uh, 2017, how I got busted. And the other one is basically uh, how I conducted my business and the business plan I had. And it's called How I Made a Million Dollars a Year as an Upscale Escort. So, and some of my escorts did make that. So that's basically the two books I have. I have a third book and I haven't published it yet. It's ready to go, but I'm going to wait a little bit. You know, I'm going to wait a little bit for the right time to publish it. This is mostly for it's a guide for clients. It's on, it's on the client side, right? So it's basically um, how to choose the perfect escort. I think that's the working title at the moment. Uh, it's a quick guide for the escort clients and how to you know to protect themselves, how you know to behave as a client, the protocol, how to get the best results, how to get the most out of the escort, you know, nicely, gently. Uh, how to, you know, to respect the, the escort's wishes, the services, and all this stuff, all the session protocol, 
uh, how to watch out for fakes, how to watch out for, you know, gorilla pimp girls, you know, being, uh, you know, being bullied or uh, robbed or something like that. I've heard a lot of horror stories, how to be safe as far as STDs and AIDS and all this stuff, you know. So it's uh, it's kind of like a guide to just being safe. I have an inkling to rub Matthew's belly for that. Good luck. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Who wants to rub your belly? Again. <laughs> Some old at so many times in Laguna Beach. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that place. Uh, I love that bar right they had uh, downstairs, the one that's right on the on the see through the glass. You're basically on the rocks, right? I love that place. It's it's really yeah, I wonder if they're open. I don't even, I haven't even checked, but I would like to go back there when it's open again. I used to love the place. I used to meet a lot of uh, my uh, acquaintances and friends when they used to ask me, where do you want to stay? Where should we stay? I would tell them one of the places if, you know, go to the Regent or Pelican Hill Resort and spend a ton of money. That's a really good place. And it's very nice, a very chic boutique and it's small and it's right, right on the water. So it's great. And you could walk, you know, all the things right there, all the art, all the good restaurants, and you know, summer. It's it's very very nice. <clears throat> so, uh, what else? What else you guys want to talk about? I let me see. Do I have anything else? Hmm. Mm, nothing is uh, is clicking right now. So yeah, I, and I wanted to ask you guys if you want me to do any special video if you have something you want me to expand on i'll be more than happy to do that okay just let me know send me an email put it in the comment whatever i'll get it and i will i will do my best to uh, accommodate your request summer i'm ready to read your other books already i'm intrigued by this i wish we could reverse the clock haha <laughs> i should write a book on my flight attendant days yeah you should why not i'm pretty sure you have some stories boy yeah, I met the housewives at that bar in OC. Yeah. Yeah, you meet a lot of people. I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, celebrities there. Uh, you know, every time almost I was there at night, especially in that little bar restaurant thing. When you go in, it's, I think, to the right. Yeah, it's a very, very nice place. Yes, yeah, Summer, you should. You know, I, I encourage everybody, man. It's, you know, if anything else, even if you sell one book or a million books, you know, one thing I learned about writing books since Summer put it up that it's very, very, um, you know, it's, there's, there's something about having to think about your past. You actually basically, especially if it's autobiography, right. Um, you know, which I did that too. You know, I, I, I don't know when I'm going to publish it. If I ever going to publish it, there's a lot of, you think this is juicy. I mean, wait till you hear the rest of my story that has nothing to do with escorting, but yeah, it gets really wild, especially before, you know, forest coding, but um, I got to tell you, um, it's very therapeutic and it makes you, it forces you to think about things. Like I'm the type of guy that uh, I usually bury the past because I don't want to think of like a lot of things that happened to me in 38 months in, in the big house, right? When I was on vacation, I can't even, I'll have to really dig deep to remember it, right? Uh, so that's the way I deal with, with past, especially like traumatic things is like, that's my coping mechanism cycle is I bury it, right? And one thing that writing a book did for me personally is that it really forced me to look within and to think everything that's happened. And, and I started thinking and asking myself, why? Why do I do this, right? Why do I act this way? Why, why do I make these kind of decisions? So it forced me to look within. Hey, Hustler Mindset, how you doing? Good to see you. It forced me to, to look within, and really, that's when I started really working on myself, all the self-help, because I started with my autobiography, to be honest with you, before any of the Man of Suzanne stuff. You know, it's just, I said, you know, let me sit down, and I had 23 hours. This is when, when I was at reception. You go from county, you get to reception, and reception is where everybody goes from Southern California into that area. In my case, it was Wasco Prison. And you sit there in a cell for 23 hours a day, seven days a week. So you literally have out of 168 hours a week, you got seven hours outside of a 10 by whatever, six, 
or 12, yeah, 10 by six or something like this, or eight by six. It's no bigger than a small closet, not the walk-in closet. No, 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 small closet. So you have a lot of time. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? You know, I went from 17 hours a day, seven days a week for almost five years to zero, right? What do you do? All you do is think. So I barely can scrap, you know, scrape up some papers because they don't let you do anything, right? You got nothing coming until you get out of there and go to wherever you're going, which I ended up in Chino eventually. You have nothing to do. So I started writing. That's when I started writing. And I discovered I, I want to write these things and I wanted to restore all my memories uh, as they were fresh. They were four or five months old because I got in uh, Tawasco in June, June 9th, and I had gotten arrested January 31st. So it was like a five months. Is that five months? Yeah, five months span, right? So I didn't want to lose my memory. So I started putting things down on paper. And I started with the autobiography without any intention of movies or Madame Suzanne or books or doing this or anything. You know, it was just the beginning of the journey. And it was really, really, honestly, God, it was, guys, it was really, really therapeutic. You know, so if you have a thought that you want to start writing, don't put any pressure on yourself, but just without any expectation, you just sit down, this, this is my advice, sit down and start writing. Just whatever you want to start. You want to start at year one or year 10 or year 15 or whatever you want to start. Just sit there and start writing. And you will see that sometimes it's going to be painful. I'm not going to lie. You know, some of the things that I had to relive were not fun or were not easy. But the at the end result is it's the therapeutic Part of it was amazing that helped my transformation and changed my entire life and entire, entire mentality and mindset and decision making and how I viewed life. <clears throat> um, Haslam Mindset said, your story needs to be on the big screen. Yeah, I, uh, I'm working on it, brother. I'm working on it. Um, I don't know if it's a, are you a male or female, but it doesn't matter. But um I'm working on it uh, diligently. This COVID-19 is not an excuse, but this COVID-19 has not helped the production, you know, part of it, but it's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, summer, I traveled first class once and spent a week in Napa Valley in my 20s with a guy I met one night in New York City. Met him at a bar, flew to San Fran, could have been killed, raped, etc., but I trusted well, yeah, you know, when we're young, man, we, you talk about being young and, and doing some crazy stuff. I can tell you, like, we don't have enough time here. Trust me. I mean, how much time do you guys have? We could we could be here till, till next year. Believe me. I get it. Thank God he was a good guy. Yes, I spent a week touring wineries. That's really, really cool. You know, I'm not a drinker. I don't really drink. But uh, I've been to the wineries up in uh, Napa and uh, here in Temecula. They have wineries, believe it or not, they're really nice. Uh, South Coast, I've been to a South Coast winery one time with a bunch of friends that wanted to, you know, taste all the wines and all this stuff. Uh, yes, I agree. Writing is therapeutic. Yeah, so, you know, we'll be looking uh, forward to your, uh, and I'll promote it on this uh, channel, hopefully, by the by the time you're done, if you want. Um, yeah, I would love to uh, to read your book about your travels and, you know, all the crazy things that you know when you when you hear about like when i was younger at one point i wanted to be that right i saw a movie or something like oh that'll be so cool to travel the world and meet all these different people and meet all these hot girls right and like oh, yeah you know i started you know thinking about it but uh yeah yeah summer agrees with hustler yeah but so yeah man it's uh it's very therapeutic and uh thank god i did it and uh you know you never know it's like a it's like a snowball. Everything starts with a thought, an idea, a feeling, and you just, you know, it, it evolves and you build on it, right? Or, or it goes by the wayside, depending on what happens to you. As I said, I love it. They also have hot air balloons. Yes, yes. You're talking about Temecula? Yeah, I think they have hot air balloons too, too, over there. <clears throat> so, see? Went from stocking to hot air balloons. Yay! This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Very versatile. That's what I love about this, that we have the exchange. Um, ha ha, nope. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I really love. I actually look forward to this. I mean, of course, 
obviously, you know, we have what, six, seven, eight, I think nine people were the most we had tonight. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. We could have just one. It doesn't really matter. It's not about the numbers. It's about the experience to me. And I know sooner or later we will get there with the numbers, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. It is so much, and I think I did a video about this. There's so much emphasis on numbers and views and likes and subscribers and and all this stuff, right? And it gets to be too much sometimes. It's just over overwhelming, and people will do anything just to get the to views. I'm, I'm I have a, I have a purpose and I have a mission, and also I do want to make the movie and, and get some money. To be honest with you, legally, so and the 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 series, and I and I think it's entertaining, and I think it's it's got unique and fascinating parts of it. So, you know, why not? I'm a sped teacher now. Working on masters now. Oh, from stalkers to hot air balloons. Yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a there's a great uh, title there, right? For for a movie or a book or something. <laughs> oh, look at who look who's here. Bad Sophia is in. Hey, Bad Sophia, long time no see. I'm glad you finally made it. Matthew Fetty, I'm sure you brought this up before, but what economic class did you? Your family raise you, and they say you have to be exposed to luxury to want it. Who inspired your younger actions? <clears throat> so, and he said, my mother and father were drug addicts, but my grandfather had a Rolls Royce, and that's what made me believe I should, could have one. Of course. Uh, yeah, I, I discussed that all over the place. Uh, my, um, my money obsession and my self-worth came from my father's side. Uh, he was um, a general contractor. He got to Kuwait. I was I was born in Kuwait and came here at three years of age. Um, my dad was working in Kuwait uh, from 56 on. I was born in 63. He was there till the 80s, right? And then he retired. But he was one of the first uh, three contractors to stop building the infrastructure in Kuwait after they discovered the oil, annexed the oil from, from the British. They gave it to the Kuwaitis. So they had to build. They went from mud huts. We talk about from uh, from stalkers to air balloons. We talk about from mud huts to literally palaces. My dad was like, did the prime minister, the sheiks, all these all these people, right? And I used to believe me, like even growing up in the summers, I would go over there to visit my dad at a, as a young kid, you know, six, seven, and and I remember playing with in the palace of the prime minister of Kuwait. Uh, his last name is Al Sabah. I think they're they're ruling family. They're just like Al Saud in Saudi Arabia. Kuwait is Al Sabah, and they had everything in that palace. We're talking about, I don't even know how big, I can't tell you. They talk about the, the luxury mansions here that whatever, these places are unbelievable. And my dad built that one for him. And I ended up meeting his kids. Uh, he had some young kids because that guy has been married like 20 different times because they're all Muslims and they can marry up to four at a time, but they could drop one and marry another one, drop one, another, marry another one. So to answer your question, simple question, answer is I got it from my father's side, right? And we were, you know, he, he made, he became a millionaire at like 72, which back then a billion dollars is a lot. So we grew up with that. But here's the ironic part. Even though he was a contractor, our, we did not grow up in a big house. We, you know, the only luxurious thing that I saw, you know, was the cars. My dad loved cars and he had my mom drive a brand new, went from Cadillacs to Mercedes in the, in the late mid 70s to late 70s. And so it's all new Mercedes every year or two years, right? So that's when I saw all, all that luxury stuff. But as far as like, I mean, I left home at a very young age and I had to scrape up pennies from the back of a station wagon that I was living in for two months uh, to be able to, to get a hot dog from 7-Eleven. So I, I, I've seen both ends, right? Uh, and I just wanted to, to be successful. And to me at the time, that meant this much money means you're successful. If you have a lot of money, you're successful. And that's how I was raised. So my self-worth was attached to money. And this is why I, I you know, I chose to and made the decisions to do illegal stuff because I thought, you know, that's the quickest way for me to get rich because I had no patience. That was another problem I had. So I just wanted to get there. Right. Summer, I'm going to go now, but looking forward to falling asleep to the book. All right, Summer. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. <clears throat> Uh, Matthew, my mother and father were drunk at second summer. Wait, I had to come back because I read the title. How do you deal with people that stalk the girls or have a favorite 
that they can't seem to let go of. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, let me let me read the question one more time. I had to come back because I read the title. How do you deal with people that stalk the girls or have a favorite that they can't seem to let go of? Okay, so there's two different kind of clients we're talking about. There's one that totally is fall in love with the escort and want to really date her, which is very, very uh, a low percentage, right? Maybe one out of 2,000, let's say. Just throwing a number out. That's a large number. One, one out of 2,000 might, like I talk about Nikki, how she had this older guy and he just came and saw five days a week, right? He really wanted to save her. He was, we call him in the business, Captain save a -hole. No disrespect to anybody, but that's just the way they call it. And basically, he wants to come in and save her. And a lot of the escorts, and myself included, capitalize on that to make more money. I'll be honest. You know, it's just a, a hustle, right? <clears throat> and they end up, they cost them a lot of money. And uh, as you have heard me before talk about it, you know, there's a lot of subject I can talk about, but connected to this. But, you know, escort client relationship never works in the real world. Okay, like to be husband and wife, you know, the old saying, you can't make one. That doesn't, that doesn't work because they will always remember how they met. So now the incident, I don't know if you heard the story that I, a second story I talked about, which is I had to confront the, uh, the stalker in Orange County. He was stalking one of my escorts. So I, once I dealt with him in a certain way and I had studied about how best to talk to them, you got to talk to them a certain way. You know, they got issues, right? Um they have anger issues. They are. They have mental, you know, some mental, emotional issues. So I had to really be careful how to deal with them and talk to them. And you know, I never had a problem after that, and I never booked him, and he never came around. And and thank God that was it. You know. Uh, so, uh, Captain Savahal, of course. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a very touchy issue, especially if you're not the person, and you have to come in and kind of, you know, uh, intervene, right? Or whatever the other word I'm thinking about. Um, so, yeah, you have to, like, broker the piece or figure out, like, you know, try to get this guy to, to wake up. But, you know, they have they have issues. Stalkers have issues for sure. That's good. You protected the girls at all costs. Yes, yes, Summer. That was my number one goal always. Safety number one. And look, I'm still doing it. Right. <laughs> if you look at my videos, I mean, really, they uh, and, and, you know, I, it wasn't intentional. It's just I look back and when I'm reading uh, the titles and I'm like, man, you know, I, I really believe in this. You know, I, I do this for that reason. Captain save a hose equal narcissist and will be the most controlling abuser a girl can get fooled by. Yep. That is pretty true. <clears throat> I had a stalker in Westwood. Uh-oh. Was it uh, personal or was it in the business? I mean, they're pretty much the same after a while, right? You want to expand on that? I mean, how did you get rid of them? I lived in Westwood for a couple of months. Uh, my ex that was the star of my in Hawaii, she wanted to get into uh, uh, acting and uh, I got her a gig on uh, NYPD Blue. She did guest star one episode and... Uh, Chicago Hope, she did one start, one episode. And while we were shooting for uh, Chicago Hope, uh, we were in LA. So we had to rent a place out, out in West, Westwood, right by the, uh, what is it, Century Mall or something like this? There's a mall right next door. Uh, I know you are high upper class, but stalkers can be very scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Because you never know if they're, like this article that I suggested, right? Uh, you never know on uh, WikiHow. You never know what their real intentions are or what they're capable of. I mean, look at the Night Stalker, right? Um, Richard Ramirez. He was a stalker. Hustler said he followed me after work and left notes on my car windshield. Uh-oh. And then what happened? Man, you're going to have to tell us the story. That's crazy. So obviously it turned out okay, right? I mean, you never got attacked or anything like that. It was just notes and he was in love with you or lust with you or whatever. Hmm. All right. It could be really scary. 
and they want to get you the guns, you know. I'm not going to get political or religious here. We don't talk about those two. So at least I don't like to discuss that stuff. But, you know, you got to be able to protect yourself you know, nowadays. He was a nice guy, but I just asked him to stop. Okay. And did he stop from the first time you asked him or how did that work out? Uh, some are exactly, they might just want to chat or they might want more. Yeah. Maybe they want some sex. <laughs> or maybe they just want to control. I think it's, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, obviously, but, you know, I have to do more research on that. But I'm sure they want some sort of a control thing, right? He caught emotional feelings, yeah. You know what? It's funny you mentioned that that word emotional, right? Because I've always, always talked to my experts about that separation between who they really are. Let's say her name is Lisa in real life. And then this is what we call her a different name, Roxy, to help the separation, right? So I always talk to my escort, especially in Orange County, because they've never done it before. That was uh, in one of the prerequisites when I, when I um, hired them is to try to keep, and it's very, very hard. It took me two or three years when with my exes, uh, especially Lisa Storm and then the other one, where I was working with them. So I really had to have full separation because I'm the one who's booking them to go with these guys and have sex, right? So I talk about a mind F, right? So that was really hard to do. Uh, and I talked to the escorts about the separation between themselves, who they really are, and the person that does the job, just like strippers have. Uh, pseudonyms, right? Fake names. And this is the reason why, because I don't want them to get caught up emotionally, just like some of the clients will get caught up in shows. And I know I've had girls, especially in Las Vegas, where they got caught up emotionally, a few of them with clients and they've left the business and went on. And guess what? The most ever, ever lasted was six months and they always come back. And I would tell them, you know, don't leave because this is what's going to happen. You're going to come back and ask for your job. And guess what I'm going to tell you? No. Because I can't trust you anymore because you're the one that cannot control your emotions. <sighs> yeah, you never get emotional. That's true. When that's going, you have to keep it so separate. How do you know, Summer? Are we, are we talking from experience here? You don't have to answer that. It's okay. You're a flight attendant. You know, that was a, that was a name back in the day for um, the escorts when they asked them what they did because they traveled and saw different guys. I'm a flight attendant, you know? <laughs> so I don't know if that's what you're doing, but if you are, good for you. Listen, it's a great experience, right? All business, yeah. And you know what, Hustler? The, the key is, it is all business, but here's the key. It's just like Bruce Lee said, the art of fighting without fighting, right? It's the art of escorting without escorting. I just made that up, by the way. So basically. And I've always talked, I've talked in, in my book about the artist selling without selling, right? About how to sell and how to upsell and all this stuff. But it's basically making the client feel like it's a real girlfriend experience, which what we sold predominantly for 20 years. From 99 to 2016, I sold nothing but GFE, right? Some girls did a little bit more service, some girls did a little, did a little less. <clears throat> but that's that's a trick, but here's the thing, right? When you do that, some of these guys misconstrued that with that that you're really interested in them, just like uh, the strippers with Matthew, right? That you they think that you're really interested in, and now now they start getting emotionally attached, right? Which is great for money on our part because that could be a sugar daddy in the making or exclusive arrangement or more money or whatever, right? Because they can come and see you more, right? Uh, so. Um, that's that's what it gets tricky. It's like you do such a good job as a GFE that you have some guys that that becomes either stalkers or they want to come and marry you or they want to save you and all this stuff. So you know you can't win, right? There's always a, a side effect of everything, you know. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's fine line because I have to have sex and be a business person. Mm -hmm. GFE sounds like a terrifying line. Girlfriend experience. Hmm. I'm telling you, man, that that girlfriend experience line came out came about, and I was I was crazy. I went nuts because back at the in the day, I think it was 2000 or 2001 when the term started popping up online. It meant that 
girls kissed. And it was basically done by escorts that were not great looking. Some of them were overweight. I could tell you a few people that in Vegas that I knew about that they started offering this. And I went nuts on them because I'm from the old school. Back in old school, there's two things that you never allowed the client to do. Kiss or go down on you. That's too intimate for most escorts, for most girls, well, most women, excuse me. So when as you can imagine when GFE, the term came out, and part of it was to kiss, I went bananas. I actually remember calling this overweight girl that was literally 100 pound overweight, and I'm not body shaming anybody. I know everybody's sensitive nowadays and about the weight and about the coat. Look, it's not about that. It's about just being straight up. I told her, what are you doing? I said, now everybody's going to have to do it, and now you're just opening this floodgate. You know, this really bad one. She's like, well, I, you know, I got to get called somehow. I got to make a living because she wasn't good looking and she she was overweight. I'm like, I felt like telling her, you know what? I'll, and I did. I think I did. I told her, you know what? I'll, I'll go to the gym with you. I'll help you put you on a program with diet and exercise and, and you'll make good money. But but so that's how it all started. Right. I wasn't really I wasn't for it. Trust me. <clears throat> Uh, Summer, when I was younger, I could do it. Now I'm in committed relationship, but in my 20s, it was different. Yep. Hustle, oh, tell me about it. <laughs> Looked for older men. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. All right, sugar baby. We're going to change your name, Summer, to sugar baby. A hustler. Guys will say, let's move to Florida and say they'll leave their family. Just like when somebody is married. And they meet somebody at work or what at the car wash or whatever. They start cheating on their wife. And they keep them on the ropes because they want the sex and they enjoy. They're getting something they're not getting at home because guys are wired weird like that. Wired weird. And um, they'll tell them anything. And most of the time, two, three years later, and the woman, the mistress is still waiting in the you know, in the bleachers on the sidelines. And the guy is still with his wife. and. He's never going to meet, leave his wife. So there we go. <clears throat> Summer, I stayed at the Plaza Hotel in NYC with a guy. Woke up next day, took his driver in a Mercedes to Gucci to buy a handbag of my choice. Oh, look at you. Tell you, these guys have money. <laughs> you got to find them. <laughs> okay, now you got to knock it out because now you're making people think, especially me, about that and the money that's in that but yeah it's true it's true and you plus you're in a committed relationship so i'm hoping you got your love relationship and you got the rich guy then you've you you know you got it uh all the way around you gotta find them yeah that, it's not easy and you're not gonna find them on seekingarrangement.com i'm gonna save you some time right now guys boys and girls listen to me don't waste your time or energy Unless you have a ton of time and nothing to do, seekanarrangement.com and sugardaddyforme.com do not work. Uh, go back and uh, listen to my Sugar Daddy video. Uh, I, I tell it all in that video. I'm telling you, I tried for about six months. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. A lot of them just want cheap, you know what, uh, take you out to BB's for 150 bucks. Call that a shopping spree, which they have no clue. You can't even buy a decent. I can't even tell you what you can buy with 150 bucks. But anyways, and um, buy you a dinner at some Applebee's or Olive Garden or some, you know. If you're lucky, you'll go to a claim jumper. I don't know if they even have those anymore. And uh, they just want uh, somebody not to watch the clock and do whatever they want sexually, basically. Very cheap. <clears throat> Matthew, money and dementia. These are guys with money and no dementia. There are guys with money and no dementia. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Money and dementia. That's another good title. There you go, Matthew. It's your book title, movie title, whatever. <laughs> we got from stalkers to hot balloons. <laughs> People are like, what the hell? What? And uh, from money to dementia or money and dementia. There you go. That's funny. I mean, look what happened to Anne Nicole, right? I watched her documentary like a couple of months ago, whatever. Okay, now. 
I know, like I always said, my my they they would ask me like, what's the best? Uh, and it's in the book uh, and how I made a million dollars a year as an upscale escort. They would ask, you know, what is the perfect uh, sugar daddy, right? And I always said the same thing. You know, it's uh, somebody that's eighty five years old, worth at least a hundred million dollars, have one foot on a banana peel and another one on the grave, and that's how we roll, baby. That's the best. And Anna Nicole Smith had the great idea. But the problem with Anne Nicole Smith, her execution sucked, right? She was not smart enough to lock in actual real financial things, instruments in her hands. You know, forget about the, the will and all this stuff aside from that. Get diamonds, get cash, get whatever. And, you know, she died pretty much broke. I'm gone, guys. Yeah. All right. Oh, look at the time. An hour and 10 minutes away. And 10 minutes into this. You know what? We could go all night, guys. And I hope that we could do this again. Um, I love you guys. Thank you, Summer, Matthew, Miss Vivian. Um, my dirty girl over there. And uh, Dirty Lori. Um, you guys are great. I love you guys. Remember, if you have not gotten my book, you want one or two books or both of them or the audio, the E, whatever combination, send me an email, okay, and uh, I will send it to you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Madam Suzanne Live. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. If you have not found your happiness, please look within. You will find it. Bye, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.